As a community, we understand that history has been told only through a few perspectives and that we carry the responsibility of telling the whole story, one that is representative of all of the voices in our history. Fredericksburg has long seen a confluence of peoples and ideas that are central to American history, and that includes our entire history, from the Native Americans who were stewards of the soil on which we stand, to the Europeans who settled it, to the enslaved Africans who built it, to the civil rights movement and the history we are creating here and now. The revolutionary spirit that is Fredericksburg exists because of that rich confluence. And it continues today because of the ongoing efforts of our citizens, our educational institutions, our businesses, and our leadership. Thank you all for being here today to remember those courageous Americans and to help us share the story. I would like to say uh, today is a big day for Fredericksburg. And also I would like to say this is, this is what work looks like um, right here today. This is what work looks like. And you know, there, there's, a, there's a lot that goes into to history and the history that we've learned, the history that we've been taught. And um, we live in a day today where we can do fact finding because the history will tell the story itself. So I'm, I'm glad to be a representative of the city of Fredericksburg. I'm, I'm glad for the late night conversations. Um, I'm, I'm glad the direction that, that the city council of the city of Fredericksburg is moving. And it's, it's truly an honor. And like I said, fact finding now is, is, is almost like history books again. So. You know, there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot underneath the surface of Fredericksburg. This is the beginning and um, definitely not the end. So those are my comments, but this, this is a huge day for the city of Fredericksburg and, and a long time coming. In 1946, the court had ruled against segregated seating on interstate buses. And in 1960, they extended that ruling to interstate terminals like the one we had here in Fredericksburg. Yet despite these decisions, little had changed along Southern highways and byways. Core sought to place pressure on the Kennedy administration to enforce the Supreme Court's decisions. And through the Freedom Rides, they adopted a strategy known as nonviolent direct action. In doing so, they adopted the mantra, be the change you want to see in the world. If you want to ride interstate buses with integrated seating, then you ride the buses. If you want to use restrooms or request lunch counter service at a terminal without racial restriction, then you do so. Freedom writer James Peck reported in Core's newspaper in May of 1961 that that is precisely what he and his colleague Charles Person did at this stop along the Freedom Rides by challenging the color line in the restrooms available at this Fredericksburg facility. We should never forget that Fredericksburg was already familiar with this approach because local young people here had deployed a similar strategy the summer before as part of the broader sit-in movement demanding equal service at lunch counters and places of business downtown. In organizing the Freedom Rides, Core's director James Farmer once said it was his intent to put this strategy on wheels. Later in his life, Dr. Farmer taught courses on the civil rights movement as a distinguished professor of history and American studies at Mary Washington College, our University of Mary Washington today. And I would like to share with you some of his words recorded during a lecture with his students about why he thought the idea of putting the movement on wheels was important. In the Southern Sudden Movement, he said, it was students who lived in a given town, like Fredericksburg, who were sitting in at the lunch counters in their town, and other people were supporting their efforts. But when people from outside of the town would go into the town and participate in this action, then the town fathers and the local papers would scream, there are outside agitators coming in, and that was presumed to be bad. The concept was that only people who lived in a locality have the right to be concerned about what happens in that locality. And the assumption was that there was something wrong for people who didn't live there to involve themselves in the action. Well, in the Freedom Ride, we rejected that concept. We felt that any American citizen, wherever he lived in the country, had not only a right, but a duty to be concerned about injustice wherever he or she saw it, and had a right to go there and try to do something about it, to become personally, individually involved in the action. As we mark the 60th anniversary of the Freedom Riders' arrival here in Fredericksburg, I hope we can carry Dr. Farmer's words with us in our hearts, with gratitude for the bravery and determination of both local civil rights activists, as well as the Freedom Riders, 
who ultimately put the movement on wheels through their participation in this national campaign. The Freedom Rides took them through Virginia and onward towards Alabama and Mississippi, where they encountered violence, arrest, and imprisonment, and compelled the federal government to issue new regulations governing interstate transportation. On this important day, I hope that we can also find the conviction to become personally, individually involved in the action, as Dr. Farmer said, and work to address injustice not only here in Fredericksburg, but wherever we may find it.